Now, how did Cynthia and Candy really think this whole role playing was going to go well? It's like, is anybody thinking? Does anybody know this group? It's like, low-key, I feel like sometimes they be like, you know what, let's start stuff. What's up, y'all? I'm back with another video. <laughs> Before we even get into this review of Real Housewives of Atlanta, how y'all doing? With this quarantine, honey, I'm just trying to survive. I've been binge watching Real Housewives of Atlanta, so y'all know. I'm just over here maintaining. I'm looking, I'm looking very much bald, but she is not tiny. She is a ponytail, and I got it cut last week, so she's super healthy. But yeah. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Did I say that right? Program. Ugh programming sorry it's a tongue twister okay so we were expecting this spit from nini scene to play out for months honey because bravo made it known on every commercial every highlight every clip that it was coming and it finally came and i didn't like that from her and i'm not a huge fan of kenya's but nini being my girl i never want to see her stoop that low and even though she didn't actually spit I still, I just didn't like it. It's like, y'all know Nene got reads for days, honey. She gonna tell you about yourself. She already has this loud voice. All you're going to hear is her. She definitely will overpower you with her tone. It was just no need for that. I told y'all last week she was definitely going off the Grey Goose. But that still heightened the situation. And I do feel like those are her real feelings. However, I do feel like the alcohol intake just took it somewhere that it did not have to be yeah i did not like my girl even doing the gesture of spitting that's just that's just low that's just very distasteful and that's like the lowest thing you can do to someone like to spit on them like not slap not punch but to spit honey honey that's like some real like knuck if you bug you spit on who like, it's no way, like, you can avoid a fight after you don't spit on somebody. Not saying that she wanted to avoid it, because, honey, I honestly feel like she really did want it. It's Kenya who was saying, like, oh, you feeling froggy, then jump. She's jumping. You're sitting down. Trust me, this frog is jumping and leaping. She's ready to leap on your ass. I also did feel that Kenya was reaching a bit, saying that Nene was calling her baby a buffalo. I feel like, yes, Nene did call her baby a buffalo, but it's unintentional. She was directing that comment towards Kenya. Like, she's not trying to say that she thinks your baby is a buffalo. She was saying because you're pregnant, you're so big as a buffalo. But I do understand why Kenya was able to try to, like, construe it and make it seem as if she was talking about Brooklyn because of how she said it. However, we all know that that's not what she was trying to say. And before y'all think that I'm going in on Kenya, I, by no means, I am not. I feel like I'm quite impartial, honestly. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I do not blame Kenya for getting up and leaving. Like, Kenya's going through a lot. Like, the last thing I want to do is argue with a bunch of women. And, like, my home is in shambles right now. Like, my love life, my heart is broken. The last thing I want to argue about is me talking about your wine, ruining an event, not understanding why I'm not friends with this person. Like, that is the last thing, like, this lady wants to deal with. So, I understand why she walked away. She addressed Cynthia. She got an argument with Nene. Then Tanya. And now she's about to get back in an argument with Nene. And she was going to continue to have a conversation with Marlo. Like, no, honey, like, <laughs> this is too much. I also do understand the other side why everyone was, like, speaking their piece. Because that's what the night was for. That was what the ruins party was for. I also understand that this is just what it is. She didn't consider other people's feelings and other people's marriages. When they were going through a lot, honey, she still made sure to be aggressive and nasty and throw shade and start shit like with Cordell and Portia calling Portia his beer trying to hook Claudio Jordan up with him calling Kim Field's husband gay trying to intervene between Apollo and Phaedra actually flirting with him like none of that was cool what she did with Tanya was disgusting and low I do wish that her and Marlo actually were able to talk i like how marlo told like the sidelines like y'all chill i got this i can handle my own I, let me talk to her and i do feel like marlo was ready to be receptive to whatever it was that kenya had to say in her rebuttals about her 
blowing up her. So I can understand where she was coming from. Yeah, I messed up your event. It was times you threw daggers at me and I threw daggers back. Kenya and Marlo are both my least favorite cast members. And it's because they both remind me of each other. They both are bullies to me. So I never like really choose a side with those two because it's like you did shit, you did shit, you take it, you take it. You give what you get with those two. Like they're like the same type of people. I didn't feel any type of way honestly when Kenya intruded on Marlo's event. Yes it was wrong but because of their history like I understood it. And because they're the same type of people. I do feel like Marlo was being sincere in her approach to Kenya. And I do feel like she was ready to like be warm, talk it out like grown women. However, the sidelines got into it. Kenya getting offended about her, calling her an actress. She just couldn't take it. And that's really just like a smaller jab. And usually she would be able to ignore that. But because she has so much on her plate. And then all these girls are coming at her with different issues. So I understood her breakdown. It was expected. It was expected. Okay, so Candy is my girl. However, this season, uh, I don't know what's been going on. She's just been taking up for Kenya even when she's wrong. And usually, Kim, what I always loved about Candy's character, Candy gonna let you know if you're wrong or right and whether she's your friend or not. And that's what I love about her. She supports everyone. She's always, like, neutral. You ever notice, like, how the girls always gravitate to her? It's because she has, like, an honest spirit. However... This season, she's just been doing too much with Kenya, saying, oh, be sensitive to her because of her husband. Like, just too much. Like, she's just been taken up for her, and I don't understand why. The first time she really, like, shut her down and checked her was when they were at the dinner in the sky, and Kenya was going in on her friend Cynthia's wine cellar. That is the first time, like, she checked her. The next day after that ruins party, I could definitely appreciate Candy telling Kenya, look, Nene has tried to extend all the branches with you several times, which she has. I get what you're saying, but is she gonna sit there and give a whole speech about how she wanted to know how you were feeling and da 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 da? Listen, that was at the oh. table face to face. Oh, okay, she wanted to know, but she didn't reach out. But even this week, she was trying to have a conversation with you before she had a conversation with Portia. I was like, it's about time, Candy. Like, honey, you just been letting her do whatever she want to do and you ain't been checking people. You always let people know, like, okay, this was wrong, this was right, and you always do it with, like, a diligent approach or what's called for. So it was like, where you been at this season, honey? This is what I've been waiting for. For you to let her know, like, sis, you tripping. You tripping. And did y'all see the nerve of Kenya to play victim and say that Nene was low blowing her with bringing up her husband which she was but it's like girl did you forget did you forget who you are didn't i just name them for y'all portia and cordell kim fields and her husband tanya and her man phaedra and apollo i remember she was even like dancing on peter when they were like in miami this that's crazy stuff it's like you have never had any boundaries or respect for people in their relationships so now now you want that. Candy, come on now, girl. Get it together. Let her know. Don't just be a kick in laughing like ain't like everything all good because it ain't. And now, this right here just this just this just don't make sense to me. Last week, I don't know what Tanya and Portia was thinking, thinking that ruins party was gonna go well. Now, how did Cynthia and Candy really think this whole role playing was gonna go well? It's like, is anybody thinking? Does anybody know this group? It's like, low-key, I feel like sometimes they be like, you know what, let's start stuff. Something's going, things are going too well. Things are going too well, so let's mess it up. Oh, and I say that because, hold on, I'm about to forget something. The beach, that beach, the activity building, that, that was great. They looked, Marlo looked fly. She was serving, honey. I'm going to give it to her. Nene was serving, honey, Miss Lee's. I didn't know Miss Lee's body was in this edge. Like, that was, like, a fun day. Like, the vibes were good. And here come Candy and Cynthia. Wait, they want to role play. Why? Did you not have enough of the Beast and the Beast last night? I did actually want to see, like, Candy and Cynthia play them out. I really feel like that wasn't anything for Nene to leave from. Like, it's just like, it is what it is. Like, why leave? 
usually Cynthia and Candy, they're very considerate people. So I don't feel like they would have like any like malice involved in their scripts of playing those two out. I do feel like it could have went well. However, I already expected it not to go well. But that was something that could have went well. Even though it's like knowing this group is not. So that's all I pretty much have to say, honey. I'm just staying tuned till next week. Next week, I'm not gonna lie, I do look a little kind of boring. It's like Kenya looks like she's going to like a therapist. Ace misses candy. Like it's not like anything to be hyped about. I feel like this whole Nene spinning thing was the whole highlight, the whole peak of this season that everybody wanted to see. We saw it. Whoop de doo. And I just feel like next week isn't just gonna be anything crazy. I don't know when the reunion is gonna be shot. Andy, ooh, our prayers are going out to Andy. I hope he has a speedy recovery. He has been infected with the coronavirus. So, we don't know when we're gonna get our reunion. But definitely our queens, our queens need to get this reunion. I don't know how they're gonna schedule this out. Because it's like, I'm not sure if people's interests will like change for the season. Like with over time. My interest, y'all know I'm always tuned in, honey. I told y'all I binge watch Real Housewives. That's just, that's just my show. But we're just gonna stay tuned until further notice. I thank y'all for kicking it with me in this review. Let me know y'all thoughts. What y'all think about Nene? What y'all think about Kenya, Candy, Cynthia? What it is that you want to see from me? Y'all stay tuned for many more videos. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to your girl's channel. <laughs> Alright. See y'all next week. Thank you.